Hello and welcome to this week's yarn chat. My name is Nicole and I'm the brains and the beauty behind Yarn Craft by Nicole. And I've got so many fun things to show you this week. We've got a Rhinebeck recap. I'm going to show you some like two finished objects, some really good progress on some other things and then some really pretty yarn at the end. So the first thing that I want to show off today is I'm wearing my Rhinebeck uh, t-shirt. I love the little sheep <laughs> icon this year, the little logo. It's so cute. And then this is my Rhinebeck sweater. So I don't think I've shown it to you in all of its glory. Can you see the back? It is delightful. It is just what I wanted. It is cozy. I'm a big fan. And it was so much fun to wear at Rhinebeck. Um, this uses Happy Place yarn. Um, the original Happy Place, the one that is half cotton, half wool. I know that Tony just did the Apricity line with uh, Hobie, which is also called Happy Place, but it's Happy Place Apricity. That's um, a lot different. It's a bulky and it has alpaca. Maybe when it's super bulky, but I love it. There's no pattern for this. I uh, met up with some yarny friends at Rhinebeck and one of them asked me, so when are you going to do a, a tester call for this? I'm like, I don't know that I will. This mine has 192 squares for my size and they're all seamed. Like, I just don't know that I would have the buy-in for that. Um, and I really like that it was my, like my idea, my brainchild. That being said, um, I am going to release like the making of the sweater probably this next week. I have all of the videos filmed and I just need to do some editing. So hopefully this next week you will get to see that. Um, if you haven't though, you should check out my blog post about uh, Rhinebeck. And then I also did an Instagram post too, but I'll also talk about it here. But I love this. This was so much fun to wear. We ended up going two days and I wore this both days and I'm so glad I did. It looked great with both outfits. Okay, the other thing that I have that is finished is the Dragonfly Twist Cowl. Let's see if I can hold it open so you can really see how big this is. But this is from Sass and Stitch. She did a crochet along with her book release. This is a pattern from her book and it came out super cute. It's a one skein project. I took this with me all over the place and I really like the way that it looks. It's, it, um, it drapes very nicely. This is a La Vienne yarn that is the Cash Marina base. It's very soft, very luxurious, and I really like it. It's, it's just the nice little throw on, cozy, show off some pretty yarn um, project. So I have ideas about doing some other patterns in her book, but her crochet along was seven weeks. I actually finished this the last week it was going. Um, and it was nice that like, it's a relatively small project and I did it in seven weeks cause I didn't have to do it any quicker than that. But I really, really like it. It's so lovely. I've already worn it once. We wore it to the, or I wore it to the, uh, aquarium the other day when I took finished object pictures. Okay. So, Next we'll talk about, let's do the sweater next. So uh, this is the pattern test that I have going right now. And this is the front panel. This is the Serendipity T from um, Serena of the Crafty Crocheter. And I have the front panel and the back panel done. Finished the back panel last night. Where did it go? Okay. Back panel. It is all Tunisian knit stitch except for the bottom, which is um, like a Tunisian ribbing. And I am using Barocco Vintage DK, which is about a half, half acrylic, half wool. And the color is Tide Pool. And I love it. The drape is great. It's going to look really pretty with my eyes and very happy. The, sh the sleeves are really short. And so now that I have both of the body panels done, I've got some seaming, some very short sleeves to make. 
and then I'm done. With this yarn, because I've used it before a lot, what I have found usually makes the most sense is instead of blocking the panels of something like this, I'm gonna put everything together, sew it up, and then steam block it because of that high acrylic content, like it's half acrylic. Um, this doesn't generally grow too much or shrink too much. Pretty much stays about where you crochet it. And um, so I'll do a steam block to kind of help the stitches relax into their shape, but I am not gonna like wet block each panel. But I really, really like it. Very happy with it. Um, I'm making the size six, which is a two X. I think the intended ease on this was like maybe an inch. And I'll probably have a little bit more than that just because I went up a size. Um, but I'm very, very pleased with this. Um, so much, so much got done on that this week. The other thing that got a lot of work was the squares blanket. So I don't think I've shown this to you in a while, and I certainly haven't shown you any squares that are blocked, but I'm doing a blanket with zauber balls and um, some sock yarn. I think it's what's short for spinners. And I love it. So I did a crazy wool blanket a couple years ago for myself. My mom learned how to make it and I don't make crazy wool anymore. And honestly, I love mine, but um, it, it took so long to dry the last time that I, like I hand washed it and it's a blanket um, that I threw it in the dryer for a little bit, like, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes and it, and it felt it a little bit. So I am glad that I'm using a different yarn that is not 100% non-super washable um because it'll just have a little bit more uh i don't know it'd be a little easier to care for that being said um i probably will tell the person i'm making this for some specific instructions on how to wash it but um i finished one complete zauber ball and now i know how many squares I can get out of each of those and then what size the squares will be once they're blocked because I want to do all of them at one time. So like these are both from the same ball and I have seven squares from that ball. I really like this one with the, with the blues in it. And six and seven. This might have been the first one even that I did. So um, all that being said, I now know that each of the squares blocks out to be about seven inches. Um, I can get seven squares per ball. And I haven't decided how many squares I'm going to make. If I make it a true throw size, I would need to buy, or I would need to have eight sober balls to have uh, 56 squares for the dimensions for a true throw. I might do that. I might see how it looks with fewer than that, um, but I do really like it. So this was all from one ball. And then I started the next ball and I have two done. This is the next ball that I'm working with. This is my favorite um, colorway that I've gotten so far. Like that's the teeny one that I've got going right now. And then these are the two that are finished. Um, we got this guy. And we got this guy. And these are not blocked. Um, I'll block them once I do the whole ball. So very happy with this. Um, I need to get a move on if I'm going to finish this by the deadline that I need to finish it by. But I'm really, really liking the way that it's working out. Very pleased with it. Um, and I like the texture that I'm getting. It's a linen stitch square. I am going to be writing a pattern for this. It probably won't come out this year, but maybe at the beginning of next year. But I'm making all of my notes. Um, and I'll be taking some photos of like how I'm making the squares um, as we go along. But I'm really, really, really pleased with that. And those are the only two real whips that I've got going. I'm trying to be good and finish the 
pattern test and get some good work done on that before starting another project. There is a sweater that I really want to make for myself. In fact, I think it's back here at the yarn. That is um, from Sorella. Kind of thought it would be a good birthday sweater and it would be a great birthday sweater, but I don't think I have enough time to make this before my birthday. But I have four skeins of this beautiful yarn and um, I want to make the, I don't know if it's called canned or condi um, sweater by Nomad Stitches. So that, and then I also have a bunch of um, woolies that I kind of want to make a cardigan to throw over everything out of um, and maybe wear that at Thanksgiving, but um, I got to finish the pattern test before I can start anything else. So let's talk about Ryan Beck. Um, we live about an hour and a half south of uh, where Ryan Beck is. My sister, her fiance, Chelsea came in. Chelsea's a crocheter and um, we got an Airbnb. They uh, live in on the West Coast. So they flew in a day early and then we drove up on Friday um, to our Airbnb. <laughs> spent the night there. We're going to do all day Saturday and then we're going to come back on Sunday. And, um, we got there, um, on Saturday, we ended up leaving later than intended because we were trying to get Melody to have a nap before we went. And I think she might've slept 10 minutes and then a little bit in the car on the way there. Um, and then we did like a cute little photo shoot with everybody's Rhinebeck sweaters before we left our Airbnb. Chelsea is a crocheter and she made a, like a hexi granny cardigan for my sister Erin and then made herself a granny square cardigan. And those two were her first wearables ever. Like how cool was that? That's so cool. Um, so we did photos with everybody. The lighting was great at the Airbnb and then Vaughn wore his sweater that I made for him for Christmas and then I was wearing this obviously and then Melody had her cute little um slip over and it was great and so we got there we left we were staying about 25 minutes away and we left around 11 or maybe even 10 30 but it took us over or about an hour to get to Rhinebeck just because there was a lot of traffic getting in. And then once we were there, we um, kind of got turned around with parking and some of the parking attendants on the side that we were at were not super helpful. They were just like, yeah, just follow the traffic. And we're like, what are you talking about? Where are we going? Um, and also there wasn't much traffic. So anyway, once we finally got there and parked and made it in, it was close to noon and so we got some lunch um we bought some local cheese that was the first thing that anybody bought was cheese and um we i wanted to be there by one because i wanted to meet nitty natty on the hill and that was her meetup time so we did lunch um we kind of hung out near where the hill was um uh, popped into a couple of the buildings and um, looked at some yarn, looked at some jewelry, and then uh, went back to the hill. And that's where I got to meet Dindy Natty, who is super lovely in person, um, as as you would expect. She was even nicer in person. Um, and I knew that I wanted to be there kind of on the earlier side of things because I knew she had another event at two. So I got to meet her, um, got a sticker, got a picture. And then um, on the hill, we saw a couple of other people that we that I knew, so like somebody that I tested for, Stacy of Ba Humble, um, and uh, Sorella Yarn. Um, Ashley was there, so I went over and said hello to her. And then Alexia of Two of Wands was there, and I figured she would be because I think she lives in upstate New York. And the yarn that Chelsea used for Aaron's cardigan is the Hue and Me yarn, which was a collaboration between Alexi and. Lion brand, I believe. And so I was like, hey, if you want to go say hey, that's that's somebody who helped design the yarn you used for Aaron's cardigan. And she was like, I don't know, like she was a little nervous and she's not very 
outgoing anyway. I was like, listen, I'll go introduce you. I have no qualms, but she will think it's very cool that you used her yarn. And so I convinced them to go over it. And of course, like she recognized the yarn right away. She told her what such a good job she had done. And they got a picture together. It was just so cute. We love yarny friends. Um, so after that, we went through a couple of the barns. Um, we tried to see a sheep shearing demonstration, but I think they had moved the location. And so we ended up missing that. But we did get to see some llamas. We got to see some sheep. Um, I got a goofy picture with me and uh, Melanie and a llama, which is perfect. And um, did a little shopping here and there. I got a couple of gifts, uh, but no one in the group bought yarn the first day. And by about, I don't know, two, we had decided that we were going to come back on Sunday because we didn't have anywhere we had to be on Sunday. Um, our Airbnb was close enough like after we got everything like got all our stuff and ready to leave we would just go to Ryan Beck and then go home afterwards so it was nice to kind of take the pressure off of that day and we ended up leaving around 4 30 because we had dinner reservations at 5 30 in Kingston and traffic was awful <laughs> Kingston is like maybe 20 minutes away without traffic and it took us the like the hour to get there and it just you know very much everybody and we thought we were leaving early we thought 4 30 was a good time to leave apparently not and I've heard a lot of people talk about the traffic was more intense this year on Saturday so um we grabbed dinner we went home um I think that most of the group watched football. I ended up having a headache. I think I just didn't end up drinking up enough water. So I went to bed pretty much after I put Melanie to bed. And um, then uh, I had some friends that I wanted to meet up with. Some people I've tested for or been in tester groups with that I only know online. But um, that were at Rhinebeck. So we didn't get to run to them Saturday. So we decided to meet up with them on Sunday. And that was such a delight. Sunday is the chiller day for sure and as a group we kind of decided maybe there needs to be like a chill hill on Sunday because everybody on Saturday like meets meets on the hill and it's just packed which is cool if you want to go out and meet people but if you are overwhelmed by big crowds or just I don't know need a little bit more space like it might be nice to have a chill hill on Sunday and that's what we did. So we the group of us met I think there was I don't know, seven or eight of us. And it was just so cool because like some of the people live in Ohio or um, Colorado, or I think one of the people was from Canada, like people I would not be running into casually. And we all got to meet and it was great. And they were all more lovely in person than they are online and they're lovely online. So we got a cute group picture. And, um, and then we did our actual shopping on Sunday. I got the souvenir shirt. They actually sold out the totes pretty quickly on Saturday. And a lot of people that got them like waited an hour in line to get the tote. And the totes were very cute, but honestly, like I, I don't need another tote. And the shirt is so cute. Like look at that logo. It's so cute. So, um, I got a t-shirt. I think I got a sticker and a pin and then, um, Chelsea and Aaron got some stuff and then we um, bought some yarn. So let me show the yarn that we bought now that we've had all of that lovely conversation. So I knew going in that I would probably pick up at least one like show colorway for Rhinebeck. And I knew that I was looking for yarn for a cowl that I want to make. Um, I think it's by Hunt the Knits and it's the crochet dragon tail cowl. Very cool. So I knew that I wanted like reds and blacks maybe for that. And then um, just any other unique yarn. But I, I didn't think that I needed a sweater quantity of anything because I honestly have a couple of sweater quantities of things that I want to make already that I purchased throughout this year. So there isn't anything else that I felt the need to get that much yarn for. So let me show you what I got. The first thing I'm going to show you is actually the last thing that I bought. And that is from Avalon Springs Farm. And this is for the cowl. So I got these two skeins. 
of this pretty gray and it's called Standing Stones. This is a, geez, I didn't realize how many, how many yards were in this. These are big, um, super fine, super wash merino wool. And it looks like it is a hundred percent merino wool, not like a 75, 25. And there are 555 yards. Like that is, that's a, that's a lot of yardage. So I should have plenty for the cowl. We'll definitely have some leftover of the gray. And then this is my contrast color. And this one's called Sovereignty. Ugh, and it's so good. I spent most of the day looking for a bright red, like not a, not a muted wet red, not a brick red. Um, I was thinking maybe even something a smidge darker than this, but this is perfect. Mm, so happy with this. I don't know when I will start that project, maybe over the holidays, um, but it's another project that will be just for me. And as someone who loves Game of Thrones and the House Targaryen, like that's just gonna be cool. That's just gonna be very cool. Speaking of Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, the next yarn I'm gonna show you is called Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen. Oh, how good is that? So this is a sock set from Primrose Fiber Company. And the mini is kind of hard to tell that it's different, but it's uh, more of just the red and burgundy shades, whereas the rest of it has more purples. But my goodness, like I, I was very drawn to this game, so I picked it up and then I saw the, the name of it. I was like, well, that needs to come home with me. I think this will probably be a cowl. And I actually found a really cute cowl pattern. I might put the name of it down below that's linen stitch. And then it has, it looks like a faux I cord around the top and the bottom. Um, but according to Ravelry, you can make the whole thing with a sock set. So that might be what this becomes. Um, or I might see if I can find something that has almost like dragon scales. That would be really cool. But this is from Primrose Yarn Company and it is beautiful. And this is an 80% uh, super wash merino, 20% nylon. And it's delightful. I love it. The other yarn I got is, I got this one from Bubble Bee Acres Fiber Farm. And they had a lot of very cool, like, uh, more than just nerd, but like niche uh, collections. So they had one that was like across the galaxy that was Star Wars inspired. There was one that was Lord of the Rings inspired. They had a princess collection, like Disney princesses. I think there was a Court of Thorns and Roses. Try to remember what else. Oh, and then um, Harry Potter inspired. This one is called Stormtrooper. <laughs> and I love it. I don't know what it will be. Um, but I just couldn't put it down. They had a really pretty one that Chelsea got to make Aaron a cowl that was like Obi-Wan something. And it was like tan, like muted orange and a blue. And it was very pretty. Um, but I don't know what this will be, but it, it's a sock weight yarn, um, 7525 and it's 434 yards. And I love it. I'm so pretty. Um, and they just seemed very sweet at Bumblebee Acres. And then the last skein of yarn that I got was the Show Color Way. Um, this is from Miss Babs. Her, <laughs> her area was very um, packed pretty much the whole time. But I, I had seen this, I think on Instagram. I don't remember where I had seen this, um, but I knew that I wanted to check it out in person. And um, this is their Rhinebeck Color Way. And one, I love it because I don't really have much really pink like this, but it's also got speckles of kind of like an acidy green, some, hard to tell if that's black or purple. But after I bought this, the shirt, I'm like, well, this will be, that would be so cute to wear together. And I don't really wear hats very often. I don't really wear um, like ear warmers. So it will, it will probably be some sort of a scarf or cowl, but that would be so cute to wear together. So I love it. I got the Tarte um, base, which is 75 
Superwash Merino, 15% nylon, 10% tinsel. And there's 500 yards in this, so it would be enough to do a cool cowl. I love it. And that's all the yarn that I got. So I think I'm crazy, but I did get some cool stuff. I also got some, I got a present for my mom, which I won't show you, but I'll show you what I got for me. Um, I got some alpaca socks that are super cute. And then I also got this little ornament. It's a tiny this little, little sheep with a little bell. Um, and it's just so cute. So that is my rhyme back haul. I feel like I did pretty good. I got things that I would have been sad if I had not gotten, but I didn't go crazy. Um, I went in there with an idea of what I wanted to look for, and that was really helpful to kind of be scoping out things. Um, and also just having a good handle on what things I already have in stash and what things I already want to make that I have here so I don't go wild. But it was great. I would love to go back. I would love to do the smaller shows before Rhinebeck, like um, Indian Tangled or Cake. Um, so maybe maybe next year or the year after. But we had a really lovely Rhinebeck experience. I hope that this video is finding you well. I'm going to leave you with what I can't let go. And what I can't let go of this week is just how lovely it was to be around other makers. Um, I do have a local yarn store here that I can go to sometimes for their knit nights, but a lot of the interaction that I get is from people online. And it was just really nice to be around a bunch of other makers. Are they really proud of what they're wearing? Um, really interested in the same things? Like everybody was so kind. It was wonderful. I love it. I want to go to more fiber festivals. Um, and with that, I'll wrap you wrap up this video. I hope you have a great week. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and um, let me know down in the comments below what are some other fiber festivals I need to be checking out. Bye guys.